Heading stateside now, where the U.S. city of Burlington is fighting against the fleet of F-35 fighter jets being stationed at a local airport. Vermont state residents rejected the move in a non-binding vote, saying they're concerned about noise pollution and safety. To make their feelings loud and clear before the vote, giant speakers were used to blast out the sound of a flying jet in the city centre. A number of protests were held over the weekend against the F-35 base. Police made one high-profile arrest among the activists, Ben Cohen, co-founder of the ice cream brand Ben and Jerry's. Local Air Force authorities have already invested some $83 million in preparing the base for the jets, which is scheduled to come into operation next year. The airport in Burlington is located in a very heavily densely populated area. So there are 124,000 people that live within about five miles of the runways. Half a dozen of us put on a demonstration of what that sounds like. And people came running out and said, stop, this is horrible. My children, my animals, my family, this is not appropriate for a city. It's one of the causes of heart disease. It's a cause of cognitive impairment in children, according to the best medical studies. What happens is children have delayed reading, learning disabilities, memory and concentration become impaired. Well, just some background to this. The F-35 jet program is the most expensive U.S. weapons system to date, with an expenditure of around $1.5 billion. And yet, out of 280 aircraft, half are still grounded. America and seven allies are currently implementing stealth strategy operations with the fighter jets. And a total of nine countries were involved in the development of the F-35, but it has been a bumpy ride. Repeated production delays, costs overrunning, they've plagued the defence project. And it's now been described by some as this too big to feel. Here's the co-founder of the protest movement in Burlington again. The Air Force didn't make this decision to base F-35 fighter jets in the city of Burlington based on the facts. So we don't want an F-35 based here. It's going to be damaging to the people of Vermont. It's going to be, in, it's going to make us a collaborator with any kind of foreign intervention that the president decides on. Talking of things military, the Turkish president is pushing ahead with plans to buy a Russian S-400 anti-aircraft missile system despite the threat of sanctions from NATO ally the United States. President Erdogan accused the military alliance of double standards. Let those who criticize us for purchasing the S-400 to fight terrorism look at themselves. Why are they silent about the S-300 which Greece has? And they tell us that this is a wrong step. What kind of alliance, what kind of solidarity is this? Yeah, NATO has repeatedly urged Turkey not to buy Russian weapons. Earlier this month, a top official stressed that the S-400 does not integrate with current NATO systems. But the S-400 would give Turkey a new level of control over its airspace and beyond. It's a surface-to-air anti-aircraft missile system and can engage up to 80 targets at a time at distances of 400 kilometers away. It can also hit fast-moving targets, traveling at speeds of almost 5 kilometers per second. Well, international relations professor Hussein Bagchi told us Ankara needs Russian weapons more then it requires Western support. We live at the moment a very interesting crisis uh, between Turkey and the United States of America in bilateral terms as well as in NATO terms. In bilateral terms, I think uh, the Turkish position to uh, possess S-400 is uh, necessary from the Turkish defense uh, policy point of view. Uh, Russia seems to be one of the possible partners for future despite the fact that uh, this uh, type of missile system is not applicable to the NATO structure. But uh, since 1991, first Gulf War, Turkey is always in need uh, for this type of new uh, defense structures. NATO does not provide this. 
And if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper in that story, why not log on to RT.com? Lots of background on that and plenty more of the day's big news stories as well, of course, waiting there for you. I'm back in 30 minutes' time. This is RT International live from Moscow.